pretty pleased with our results now, finally. The first year and a half of operation, we uh, killed about 95% of our hatchlings. We've got about a 95% survival rate right now. And you can see there's different sized fish in every quadrant here. And they are only divided into quarters so that we have areas for each cohort to grow out. They're not moved from one to the other. They're just thrown in there and you really, an embarrassingly long time later, we move them out. <laughs> We don't really manage the fish tightly. As we have discovered in our location, at our ambient temperature, the fish are the least, well not the least, but down near the bottom of the importance. You know, if I were to list all the organisms important, they couldn't come without the fish. Most people have lots of questions and lots of, lots of interest in the fish. The reality is this fish cost us more to raise
make the, fi the system as efficient as possible on the, for the fish. Those are people in the U.S. that if I ask them that question, what's the, what the, what's the most important organism in an aquaponic system, would probably say the fish. We think, at least as far as our bottom line goes, the vegetables are more important than fish. Now the reality is there's a synergy, so you can't have one without the other. As your car, if you could get rid of the engine, it would cost you a lot less to run your car, wouldn't it? You also wouldn't go very far. You wouldn't have to put fuel in, you wouldn't have to maintain the engine, you wouldn't have to do all of the replacements that you have to do, but you wouldn't go very far. So, in our location, we have found, we, our numbers have just readjusted, and I will stand you and physically show you what we've done and how our proportions have changed. This is an example of a system that we did very close to what UBI said. This many fish, this much raft area. And nowhere to expand because there's a hill right here. And when, when we go up to the third system of the belt, we'll show you that the fish cost so much, and because the main source of our income is selling our vegetables, it becomes in our best interest from an economic standpoint to maximize the number of the pounds of vegetables we take out of the system on a minimal number of fish pounds. So we've been playing with our proportion. But what you see here is very close to a UBI proportion. What was that? You want to talk about that for a while? Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't do the University of the Virgin Islands course, so I can only gossip about it. Tim did the course and he talks about the real numbers that he was given in that course. Some of the UBI numbers I, I give are from extrapolations because they didn't give numbers in terms of pounds of fish. They said how many fish were in the tank and what the average weight was. They didn't say how many pounds of lettuce they harvested. They said how many heads they harvested. And I had to ask what an average weight per head was. So as best we can tell, the UBI systems run on about a pound and a half of fish per square foot of raft load. Or, uh, what did you do that up? It's about three kilos of fish per square meter. We've developed a system called the low density system that runs on one fifth that amount of fish. Or, I love when he does math on the couch. system that runs on three tenths of a pound of fish per square foot of graft area. Now we've had that, the first of those systems in operation for two years. Two weeks after we put it in, we got 60 inches of rain in two and a half months. So we already have a system that has a very small amount of fish in it. We were worried about it producing enough nutrients. Even though that system got that 60 inches of rain into it and effectively dumped all the system nutrients out six times in the next two and a half months. There was no difference in growth between it and the other systems with the larger quantity of fish inside. So we know we know there's a lower limit. We know that that three tenths of a pound is not it because we went way below that with the dilution from rainwater. We don't know what the lower limit is. We'd love to do some experiments on that. We've had people come with something called TDS meters, total dissolved solid meters. I don't have one, yeah, I'll get one someday. But, um, our system test, we, the lowest that one of our system tested was 16 parts per million, parts per million total dissolved solids, which effectively is clear water. The highest was 160. That's not even nitrates and nitrites, that's total dissolved solids. That was after a huge rainstorm, some of the rain that he talked about. And we have a working theory. We'll talk about this a lot in your course. Uh, what, what standard for hydroponics? Hydroponic, uh, there's something called seedling strength and then there's full growth strength. And seedling strength is something like 180 parts per million nitrates, nitrites. We consistently run these systems, but if you had a test strip, we could test right now. 